Let's talk about quantum dots. You know, I don't think I nowhere nearly spoke about quantum dots and why they're so important. Quantum dots are very tiny, small, little microscopic, if you will, photons, okay? And that's why they call them photons, okay? That's why the TCL has their own photon technology called the NBP photon technology. But it's pretty much the same recipe. It's the same kind of technology. It's a quantum dot technology. The little tiny dots. These little tiny dots, not only do they represent the best possible color accuracy, but at the same time, these photons, these little quantum dots, they also represent the best possible white bright levels as well. Okay, now I know it's not emitting by itself. We all get that. We're using LEDs and really good aggressive local dimming to present that lumens peak brightness light that will peak through those quantum fo uh, photon cells. Now, I'm using one example here uh, with the food here. As you can see, you can see the green, and you can see the white, and you can see all the detail here. That's because you're getting a much, much better white color. You know, you're not getting that washed out yellow color like you see on these cheap LCD TVs. You're getting a really good white, bright color. On top of the red, green, blue, yellow, orange, the entire spectrum of colors. So when they measure the DCIP3, now I'm gonna show you something else. Cause you guys know me, I don't like to just talk out of my butt cause I never talk out of my butt. Whatever I tell you, it's directly here. Credibility, 100%. A lot of people ask me this question. A lot of people say, well, Mr. 4K, why is it that you always choose a native color space? And I'm going to show you why. Okay, here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to move it to the, uh, to the automatic. And you will see how much color, color you just lost. Look how much color you just lost. And look how much color you just got. Look how much you lost. And look how much you got when you leave it at native. Why do you want to leave it at native? Color gamut. DCIP3. It's the method they use to measure the color spectrum. If you want me to translate what the color wide gamut means, why color gamut? It's the spectrum. Billions of colors. They're measuring the wider color spectrum. The more colors you have, the better the ratio of that color spectrum is going to be, okay, for the lack of the better term. This is why I keep telling people to do this. People say, no, leave it on automatic. No, leave it on native. Look how much color you just lost. You, then what's the point of buying this TV if you're not going to utilize the full quantum dot 98.7% color accuracy? And yes, this TV has been measured by Cedric Artings. It's been measured by so many other people, Twit, Digital Trends, you name it, AV Forums. They all know that this TV has, and Q9F has, the best color accuracy. But that's okay. Let me show you some more examples about the quantum dots. Let's go to a, a different uh, still here. Let, let's find some different stills here. How about the red one? How about this one right here? Now you can see that red being presented much nicely here. And look how much of that red you're going to lose once you move that color space to auto. You can see it clearly right here. I'll point my finger right here. And look how much you get. Much deeper color. 
on the native. Here's another great example right here. Guys, Q8FN, the reason I recommend Samsung, the reason I recommend the Q8FN and Q9FN, if you can't reach for $3,000 and get the Q9FN, I would recommend that you go with the Q9FN, all right? Due to a higher peak brightness and even more aggressive local dimming. The reason I recommend QLED it's because of that color accuracy. Okay? If you want the best, the brightest color accuracy so you can enjoy that HDR the way it was meant to be enjoyed, this is it. Look how much you're going to lose right now if I go to my settings and I go to my <laughs> native, where is it, uh, color, uh, not the color tone, the uh, color space. Look what happens. Just look what happens. By the way, this is in HDR. Like, look right here, for example. Look at my finger, and look how much you're going to lose when you keep it on automatic. And look how much you get. You see it? It's almost like it's filling in the red. So you got much better, accurate, native color space. There's a reason why I recommend native. So if you're going to listen to somebody, listen to somebody who actually does his research, tests these TVs. I do spend a lot of time. I don't just whip up my camera and start talking nonsense like some other people out there who have zero videos, zero nothing. They're just typing on their whatever cell phones. All right. Quantum dot technology, it's something that's making QLED look the best in color accuracy. Here, let, let's just look at this really quick. Look at the yellow color. This looks amazing. And even here, you're going to notice, uh, even the deep dark levels, look at these deep dark levels here. That's a very aggressive local dimming. On top of our uh, 1500 nits with a full Y collar gamut, 98.7% DCIP3 measurement. That's almost circle at 100%, almost 100% color accuracy. It doesn't get any better than this in terms of color accuracy right now. Sorry, but your OLED cannot get as bright as this TV. Yes, your OLED, it's emitting every and each diode, organic diode by itself, but it can never reach this kind of color, peak, brightness, accuracy as the QLED can. And guess what? Guess what's so great about this? I can leave this like this for two hours and I don't have to worry about the burn in. I don't have to worry about the burn in. With the OLED, I have to worry about me pausing this video right now for you. I got to worry about that burn in or retention on the screen. I have to worry about that. Here, I don't have to. And this, this barbecue scene right here, it's a perfect example that I want to show you in terms of uh, how much you're missing when you don't utilize a native color space. Always leave it at the native color space. If you want to truly utilize what QLED can do, what this television can do in terms of color accuracy, you need to leave color space at native. Look what happens when I don't. Did you see it? Tell me, tell me what you just saw. Did you see it right here? Look at that, that, that beam of light, the burning red fire right here, how much you get of that color accuracy, and look how much you're going to lose when you keep it on automatic. You just lost it. 
and you just got it. Just lost it, and you just got it. And another thing I want to talk about. Besides the quantum dots, you guys can learn more about the quantum dots if you like uh, to learn how it's being utilized. Basically, there's three different layers. You have LCD, you got quantum dots behind it, and then you got LEDs. And those LEDs that go up to 1,500 to 2,000 nits of lumens brightness, they have a very good ag aggressive local dimming to contain that bleeding light or that, that light that might be bleeding. So that's what creates a much better picture quality with the color and the contrast ratio. Therefore, you have a much better picture quality when you're watching the television like this. But remember, Q6F, Q7F, they still utilize edulite. So it's kind of hard to contain that bleed light when you have an edulite. Full array local dimming, it's the way to go. This is why Q8FN and Q9FN is their flagship two televisions that they're using. And then you have people talking about uh, you know this television uh, has this dirt screen effect listen there's no perfect TV I never said this is a perfect TV it's a balanced TV but the way people are describing this dirt effect bending light they're describing it as if it's so bad you can't even differentiate the colors okay I have tested Q9FN I have tested Q8FN I have tested 900F I have yet to see that issue I have yet to see that problem with my friends at Magnolia okay now granted that's not to say that you're not gonna get some lemon TV there's always a risk when you purchase television depending on how it was shipped how it was put together you might get the, the limit if you get a limit we'll return it but please don't try to tell me that that all the models of that TV suck because you had a limit of a TV if you find me a better TV that has a better color accuracy I'm all eyes I'm all eyes. There's nothing better than Samsung in terms of color accuracy. I mean, we're hitting 98.7% DCI-P3 measurement. That's it's close to 100. That's almost 100%. It doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't get any brighter than this currently right now for what Samsung is putting out. Okay? The Sony's live color, it's, it's, it's good, but it's nowhere near as where Samsung is. Yeah. Well, there you have it, you know. I mean, I'm very impressed with QLED. I'm very impressed with QLED. I'm very impressed with what QLED has done so far. Uh... I really can't complain, honestly. Guys, it's one thing you're looking at this through a video, but it's a whole other thing you actually experiencing this in person. Now, granted, I want to say something. When you unbox your Q8FN, when you take it out of the box and you put it on your home theater stand. Don't expect the default settings that are left there with the movie and Vivid to be, wow, out of the box, great. You're going to have to spend some time tweaking it, using these picture settings. There's a reason why I put up these videos, guys. I do it for you. I don't do it for me. I know how to make my TVs look great. I do it to help you. That's why I put these settings out for you out of my daily busy schedule. So you guys can go ahead and try it out. Okay?
but don't expect your TV to be out of the box, wow, like beautiful. You have to tweak it. You have to spend some time tweaking it, you know, or you can come to my channel, look at what I have, look at my recipes, and then implement those re recipes onto your TV and try it out. It doesn't cost you anything. The only thing that costs you is your time to try it out. Okay? I know I'm using a Sony, it's kind of funny, but, uh, you know, doesn't matter. Demo's a demo, either way. People talk about the bending light, nothing. People talk about bending light on TCL, nothing. You know, guys, there's a lot of people on the internet. I call it a trash dump of all kinds of stuff that's there. But you got to do a better job researching and separating that trash so you can come to a better conclusion. I have no, I, I have no benefit in telling you to buy this TV or to buy Sony or to buy OLED or to buy any brand. Why? Because I'm not sponsored by neither one of them. Let me repeat this one more time. Maybe this will register to some of you out there before you start hitting the dislike. And we all know who's hitting the dislikes. But hurt black people. Let them hit the dislikes. I don't care. They're making me money. Uh, I'm not sponsored by any of these brands. Neither one of them. So therefore, what I tell you, it's exactly coming from my own personal experience. Now, if my personal experience here is not good enough for you, well, too bad. Okay. Don't let the door hit you on your way out. Okay. But I'm just trying to tell you what this TV is capable of. That's all. You know, I have tr I have tested tons of TVs from OLED, from QLED, from many different brands and I always try to give you guys the best feasible, reasonable, balanced option. I like to use the word balance. I don't like to use the word the best because there's no such thing as the best out there. It's only balance. You have to look for the balance. When I look at this TV, I look at it as a really well-balanced TV. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by a really well-balanced TV? It means that it has something for everyone. If you're a gamer, well, you're good to go. If you're a PC gamer, you're good to go. If you're somebody who loves 4K HDR movies, well, you're good to go. If you're somebody who likes to watch sports with that uh, soap opera effect, well, you're good to go. It has something for everyone. But above all, it has a really good balanced picture quality that you're not going to find anything better in terms of color accuracy. This is as best of a color accuracy you're gonna get. Because they measured it to be nearly 100% DCI-P3, 98.7%. All right, well, there you have it, guys. Um, like I said, these are my thoughts. Hopefully, you understand that, that you should use that native color space. Don't use the automatic, use the native color space and I showed you why you want to use the native color space all right guys well thank you for watching and um, I'll see you pretty soon on my next video all right guys have a good one though take care